Sick Picnic Media presents Actor Tips, good advice for Hollywood's undiscovered stars, with Linda Connors and Kent Squarein. Before I got famous, I had a long history of stand-in work. It got the bills paid and still does. I took several classes helping me to understand the duties of a stand-in. This came after I was a full-time background actor for five years. If you are asked to be a stand-in, you are moving up the ladder and should probably be sure to let your family know that you won't be returning phone calls after this gig. When you get this gig, be sure to bring your own lights. Yes! A flashlight can be easily kept in your pocket. This way, when the crew is white balancing, you can lend a hand by flashing your flashlight into their eyes. They appreciate that because it helps them to white balance their eyes. What are you fucking talking about? Just kidding. <laughs> oh. I was just kidding you. She's totally right about that. Sometimes they will also ask you to stand perfectly still, but they only say that to complete morons. When I do stand-in work, I try to use it as an opportunity to do my stand-up jokes for the crew. They're the best audience because they have no talent. The crew is generally a complete joke. They will pay attention to you though when you need it the most. Production assistants are really good therapists. Mm. I have gotten asked to be a stand-in for two and a half men several times, and those guys will listen to my jokes all day. They can't get enough. Stand-in work will pay more, and it gets you up and close and personal with the director, which can lead to intimate encounters if you're lucky. You know, with those who can put you in a guest role. So remember to get booked for those stand-in gigs and to bring your A-game so that you provide the best experience for everyone on set. Power, Power to, to the, the actors! actors.